Maximilian Wilhelm. During the day, he is working as a senior infrastructure architect at the University of Paderborn. And at night and other times, he's working for the Freifunk project, as you can also see on the slides. And he will t talk to us today about uh, software-defined networking using Debian, SaltStack, and Python. So give a warm welcome to Maximilian Wilhelm. Thank you. I hope you're not too tired after the lunch break. Um, as I have no idea who you all are, and uh, this is a software conference, I'd like a show of hands who is a networker or has uh, knowledge about networking. Okay. Um, system administrators? Nearly the same, I think. Developers? All the rest. Okay. Um, who am I? He already said it. Uh, admin by day, hacker at night, Linux fanboy. Uh, I hope all of you, if, as you are developers, are taking part in the Hacktoberfest and earn a t-shirt from DigitalOcean. Uh, if not, go to uh, search for it at Google and do some pull requests. What we're talking today, uh, basics of Linux networking, what's all the fine stuff there already is we can use, some things to uh, make it more nifty, salt stack for automation and how to plug all this together for a nice do-it-yourself SDN. But why bother building one? You can get, uh, give a lot of money to Cisco, Juniper, whoever, and uh, get something called uh, SDA, Software Defined Access, or other fine products and maybe even solutions. But I'm a Freifunker. We don't have money, at least not much, and all these commercial products don't solve our needs. So what, what's the, the background for this? That's the planning map for the Freifunk Hochstift uh, backbone. We planned nearly one year ago. Most of this is reality today. Some of these blue lines, which all represent uh, a Wi-Fi point-to-point -point link, did not work out because of topology or other bad things. But what we basically want to do is build a Wi-Fi backbone on top of the city. We have some rooftops, we have some buildings owned by the city, which prevented, uh, presented us with uh, some pods to mount antennas with and uh, put some cables on the roof, etc. pp. And we want to build a Batman network. Um, Batman is a mesh network. Some maybe have heard of it. It's uh, one of the building blocks of nearly every Freifunk network. And we have uh, 10 instances of this Batman network which have to be transported about this wireless backbone. Doing everything by hand is error prone and you get tired while doing so, so automate all these things. So that's uh, the context of this talk, why I did this. And some uh, month ago, I installed a new virtual machine using Debian Stretch, the latest and greatest stable release. And because of, uh, well, experience, or how, how I usually do things, I typed in ARP and got back, that's not there. So there is a, a paradigm shift within the Linux networking tools. All these old tools listed here are not installed anymore by default. Anyone still using them? Some. You should stop this right now. That's the new way. There is a Swiss Army knife for networkers. It's uh, IP Route 2. It uh, has the same functionality as ifconfig, VLAN, ARP, etc. pp. I will not dive into details here. If you're interested, there will be a talk on uh, the DENOC meeting, German Network Operators Group, which will be streamed and recorded, where we will go in details about uh, contemporary Linux networking, and there will be some reference at the, at the end of this talk. So if you're interested in details here, you uh, can watch out for later hints. But basically, use IP Route 2. It's cool, you can configure everything manually, it will do everything you wish or dream about. What about cool stuff? One thing I will shortly recognize is uh, VXLAN. It's uh, something like uh, an overlay network or the, the building block for an overlay network. If you want to transport uh, Ethernet frames over an IP network, usually it's the other way around. Uh, we need this for our Batman mesh. Um, so this is a nice uh, protocol which has been defined some years ago and the Linux has full support for that, so we will uh, use this feature later on. And there is lots of more, 
There are things like uh, virtual routing and forwarding instances. I guess uh, most people will uh, just understand train station right now. Um, but these are the cool features. Linux can do very high level networking. If you are you, looking out for new solutions, look for Linux solutions. It's easy, it's cheap, it's open source, can do everything you want. If not, it's open source, you can change it. So there are a lot of building blocks already there. We can put this together by hand. The next thing we would need is some automation for network configuration, like IP addresses on the interfaces. It's uh, not cool to write shell script and use IP address, add, IP address, dev interface. So there is some automation for that already present. Um, as Debian is the most uh, awesome distribution there is, at least while this talk, um, there is the if up down tool, maybe some people know about. It's the usual Debian way of network configuration. Um, it's quite cool, but it has some shortcomings. It's uh, bad for automation. It's, uh, the configuration is a text file, so it would be no problem to, ge to generate the content, but there is no means to reload the configuration if I replace the config file. There is an init script. I can restart the networking stuff, but it will tear down all interfaces, cut all communication, and then configure everything right back. That sucks. At least if I want to do that by some kind of automation, I maybe uh, cut the, my network path to that box and everything is broken. But there's hope. The people from uh, Cumulus Networks made a rewrite of ifupdown. It's called ifupdown2. It's in Python. And you can write extension modules. There is uh, quite some feature parity between the two uh, software stacks. Um, but there are some, some new shiny features. If up down two as dependency resolution, if you uh, have some interfaces which uh, rely on one another, like a channel, like two physical interfaces which should be one virtual interface or something like that, or VLANs or bridges or whatever. In if up down one, you have to write them from top to bottom in the correct order in which they should be configured. In if up down two, it doesn't matter because it's clever enough to figure it out. That's cool. It has if reload, the point we were missing before. So you generate a new config file, say if reload, and it will reconfigure all interfaces which changed. So it will not tear down the whole networking completely. Cool. And a lot of more advanced features I will skip here. But some things were missing. But it's Python. It has an uh, add-on infrastructure right there. So I took some of the nights being a Freifunker and added support for configuring Batman interfaces and copied the support for tunneling interfaces like GRE tunnels and something like that. The upstream is very cooperative. I think it has been six or seven pull requests within the last month, mostly merged. Some of them are all, uh, still open, but we're getting there. So the problem of configuring interfaces is solved. There is a building block which we can use now. One example, how does this look like? Configuring a, a VXLAN interface called VTAP, VXLAN tunnel endpoint, looks like this. So this would be something we need to generate later on. It's a bunch of text, so nothing really fancy. Okay, now we have interfaces. What about routing? We have a lot of boxes. You remember the graph with the blue lines? Every uh, point between the lines, every vertex is a router. And every router has to know how to get to all other routers and networks. So we need some routing protocols. The usual suspect would be OSPF, open shortest path first, ISIS, intermediate system to intermediate system, or BGP, or a combination of these. There are a lot of open source implementations. Firstly, BERT, BERT Internet Routing Daemon, from uh, some Czech guys, cool software. There has been Quagga, which has been forked to FRR, free range routing, um, which is used by Cumulus as well. There is GoBGP and ExaBGP, which is written in Python too. Um, we're using BERT, and we use OSPF plus BGP in the internal and external links. Works quite well. So we have a piece of software already there who can do that, another component for our puzzle. Okay, how do we automate all these things? We can do this by hand, we can create config files, everything will be reboot safe, but to log in on 20 or 40 boxes and configure everything won't work quite well. 
and everything we do in Freifunk is a spare time project, so it should be as easy as it is, or as it could be. So, let's build some automation. There are some building blocks here too. There is a salt stack. One could use Puppet, Ansible, Chef, CF Engine, or whatever, or salt stack. I choose salt stack. It's a continuous management solution, I would say. It's written in Python too. We can install packages, install config files, start or stop services, do whatever. And we have the possibility to extend the large amount of functionalities SaltStack comes with too. So if something is missing, we can add it. That's cool. How does SaltStack work? There are states. A state is a representation of some, uh, how something should be. You don't tell SaltStack what to do, but what should be the result. And uh, SaltStack will make sure that the result is present on the system. Like uh, make sure this package is installed, maybe from that source. Make sure a config file has that content. If it is, okay, fine. If it doesn't, change it. And if you change the config, please restart this service, etc. something like that. So a state is uh, the bunch of definitions of these things, like you would do one state for uh, SSH. Install the SSH daemon, create a config file, maybe install uh, SSH keys, or Smiro here, a state for configure VI, make sure Vim is installed and put a VimRC on, in place. And you can put dependencies between all these things. Okay, how does this look like? By design, it's a YAML file, usually. It can be Python 2, can be Python states. So this would be uh, install etc bird birdy igp.conf, it's a template. So we can use Jinja 2 as a templating engine, which is Python again. Can put some uh, variables in it, like the proto v4 is a var variable which will be available within the template file. And uh, if the file changes, run bird reconfigure. Before this state will be executed, require that the directory is there and require that the service is installed. If you want to look at some examples, on the bottom of some slides there are some links to GitHub. All, about, all the things I'm talking about are publicly available on GitHub. The whole configuration for the Freifunk network is there. Okay, that's the states. Then there is the pillar. It's a structured key value store. So think of the states as generic cookbooks and the pillar are the, the not the ingredients, but the, the amount of ingredients, if we are using the cookbook reference. So you can put there key, key material, host-specific configuration, this box will get this IP addresses, this box has these interfaces, this box will have this name, etc. pp, and any other configuration data. This is usually YAML too, but can, be, can come from MySQL, JSON, such a list of extension modules, you can pull this data uh, in from an external source. It's quite cool. How does this look like? It's an example of uh, traffic engineering stuff. You, defi you define your own uh, hierarchy, like uh, dictionaries, and all this data presented here is uh, represented as a dictionary internal in salt stack, and uh, you can access this from Jinja templates or from any Python modules you have. Quite easy. Okay. I was talking about templating. The default is Jinja 2. I think there is another possibility to use Genshi. I didn't use that. We only use Jinja 2 templates, which kind of is Python again, but kind of. How does this look like? This is from a state, so you can use templating within states too. So if the box is running Debian Jesse or Wheezy, so the old stable attributes, we use an external repository for the bird package. If we are using uh, Stretch, like the current version, we use the one provided from Debian. So simple example of just one if. Can be more complex. You can use for loops, etc., and get data from Pillar. So loop over all nodes we have defined. A node is... Uh, one box which is used or which is configured and put some Isinga config there. Okay, we're getting there. But I said Jinja 2 is kind of Python, can do a lot. 
What it can't do are list comprehensions, dig comprehensions, and it can't do regexes, though. But we have the, the opportunity to uh, write own modules, so this was the first highly complex module I wrote to add regex support for Jinja templates. Basically, it's a simple wrapper about the usual regex functions. And now we can use this, like here. This is the file name of the module and the function within. And I can check if some string matches a regex with a new Jinja template. OK, that was easy. How about more complex stuff? At the start, I uh, tried to do a lot of things within Jinja, like this bunch of lines within a template, nested for loops, arrays, dictionaries, whatever, to work around some shortcomings and to have some logic. If something should be considered this, uh, configured this way, then do that, else do that. And if everything else fails, we try another approach. But why not write real Python with Python modules available and all Python features? Okay, so I took the Jinja code and put it into Python modules. And that's where the SDN started. So there is this uh, another Python module which is available on GitHub too. Nowadays it's 1,200 lines of Python code, including a lot of comments because of some complexity within it. Um, contains 14 functions which will be called from over all the places uh, within the salt stack environment and some private helper functions. And all the magic is there. So there are files, uh, functions which use pillar information as a dictionary, get them as input, think about it and generate network interfaces configuration. A lot of interfaces configured on the Linux boxes will be generated automatically. We will see an example, uh, some slides in the future, uh, what the real config is, and a lot of interfaces will appear because of some things which are in the config, but of uh, some magic. We, config, uh, we generate configuration for OSPF, for BGP, internal, external, the traffic engineering stuff we've seen before, like if you want to reach this destination, then please use this way, because we know there is some, some space, or it's the shortest pass, please do that. Uh, some interfaces for the Batman stuff, the mesh network, some uh, configuration options about that network stuff like unique MAC addresses. Batman will get really crazy if there are interfaces with the same MAC address on two places within the mesh network. So we want to prevent that by all means. So that's one of these 14 public functions. And even generate complete DNS zone files. Like we have the information about what nodes do we have, what interfaces do we have, and what IP addresses are assigned to these interfaces. So I can easily generate uh, zone files which interface name dot node name pointing to an IP address and backwards. The information is all there. So the pillar is my central point of truth. Everything is written in there. And I pull out all the information into modules. It's not all. Normal, just, just normal Python. There are two networking modules we use. The first thing is the IP address module to generate the reverse DNS names. It's just there. Don't, uh, no need to do a not invented here syndrome. So someone already provided that, cool. We calculate the network address, the base address for, for a network, in uh, the, an IP network. Or we uh, generate or we calculate the neighbor IP address on some peering interfaces. So we have our IP and we just subtract one a number, also the last digit, minus one, and uh, calculate the IP address of the other side. So to not have to store two IPs which we could uh, calculate. How does this look in a topology? We have our uh, top state file, which is the entry point from salt stacks uh, point of view. We have uh, the blue things are the states, so uh, a bunch of definitions of config files, services, and packages, etc. And the green things are templates. So it's obviously not the comp complete thing, which would be much larger. It's an excerpt. Um, the network interface state 
has obviously some template file to generate the network interfaces uh, configuration file, which will call some functions within the FFRO net module, which itself will read all the data from the pillar. And at the end of this, we have a nice configuration file, and we trigger if reload from if up down to software to reload all the interfaces. The same is true for BERT, the, the dynamical routing thingy. We install the package, make sure all configuration directories are there, and then generate all configurations for internal routing protocols, external routing protocols, and all the magic, and reload the BERT daemon, or tell him to re uh, please reload your configuration, we change it. Um, the FFO, FFHO PI module is basically the regex stuff. Then there is a third thing, the FFRO authentication module, which basically are two simple functions to generate SSH keys. So we have one file within the pillar where we define what users are there and uh, who can has access on which boxes as root, as a normal user, with which keys, whatever. So this is abstracted away and uh, put there. We have, I think, our two, like monitoring system, we generate the server configuration from the knowledge about which nodes we have. So we only add one node to the pillar database and uh, rerun every configuration management. And then the Isinga config is up to date, so we monitor all systems accordingly. We don't lose something we just set up. Um, yeah, OpenVPN tunnels for uh, some connections between systems which are not connected by wireless. Besides the wireless backbone I presented before, there are three locations in Germany where we have hosting machines we operate ourselves. So they are running Linux and KVM and have a bunch of virtual machines. All these boxes are connected by VPN tunnels over the internet. We use currently OpenVPN for this uh, purpose and are evaluating WireGuard maybe as a replacement for that because it will run in the kernel and may be something like IPsec without the pain of IPsec. Okay, so <clears throat> here's an example of uh, a host configuration file. That's the, the thing where the most magic will happen, so every node has a name. It's a backbone router at uh, Vega Systems data center within Paderborn. It has an ID. The ID will be the source for the loopback IP address, basically the three digits of the IPv4 address and some digits for an IPv6 address will be put in front of this ID. And this is the IP address of this router. A location where the system is for SNMP queries. Some roles which define which states will be applied to this system. This machine will be a router, so it will get a BERT configuration. Um, it will enable routing on this Linux box with system CTL settings. It will be a Batman device, so we have to generate Batman interfaces, which we would not do if this keyword isn't there. And it's a backbone router, that's BBR. Um, the sites list is a list of one to 10 sites, like Batman instances, instances of the mesh network. Here we have only one, Paderborn City. And the combination of the role Batman and the sites will decide which interfaces we have to generate. Because of these two lines, there will be three interfaces generated, a dummy interface, a Batman interface, and, okay, five actually, two Batman interfaces, two dummy interfaces, and a link between these two. Um, and the MAC addresses will be generated accordingly with some prefix, which is fixed, the ID of the machine, the ID of the site, and the last six, four digits of the MAC address will be from what type of interfaces these four are. That's a continued example. So below the thing we, see, we saw before, it's the interfaces the box has. The first two physical interfaces of these small boxes will be uh, bonded together to one virtual link. So we have two gigabits of connectivity uh, we use VLANs above this virtual link to do multiplexing for, another end, for other endpoints. 
Um, we have a V4 and V6 addresses on this VLAN interface. And the line here, the Batman Connect sites, is uh, an optional keyword with a list of sites configured on this box of Batman sites. And this line will make sure that we generate the VXLAN configuration. I showed you before the piece of if up down config for the VXLAN interface. This will be generated from only this line within the configuration. So there is no need to put more uh, effort into the pillar to get the VXLAN overlay interfaces, just to say, OK, connect this Batman site, please. And it will provide an overlay interface over this VLAN interface. So the config we have to provide manually is small, and everything else will be uh, generated from this knowledge base. So what we end up with is this small stack of uh, network protocols stacked into another. I guess only the networkers here will really appreciate uh, this rather huge stack. Um, let's put it another way. This network is more complicated than the whole network of the university I work for. Um, I said before, we don't have much money. So on what hardware do we build all this? We started some years ago with a zoo of sponsored hardware, like many platforms. We tried a lot of things. We do this for three to four years now. And within the last two years, we tried to unify our hardware pool. We use uh, APU boards from PC engines, like square boards this size, three uh, gigabit, interface, uh, gigabit interfaces for Ethernet. Quad core, I think, gigahertz CPU, uh, four gigabytes of RAM, and we put a 16 gigabyte SSD card on it with the MZATA connection. Um, you can fit it into a small box like this, or you could put it into a 19 inch case. That uh, the backbone routers we use. Um, we found Netonics WISP switches, wireless ISP switches. It's an American product, which works quite nicely. Um, and we use a lot of Ubiquiti Network's uh, Wi-Fi gear. The antenna you see there over him is uh, a power beam. It's like 30 centimeters of diameter. It's for short range links. We use some with 50 centimeters as well. And we use some light beams for, uh, well, maybe we will see some in the future, uh, for access for clients. And we also use uh, Mesh Pro access points where your Wi-Fi, uh, your, your handy will connect. So how does the interior look then? Left is the before, right is after. That's uh, within the town hall in my city. On the rooftop, the city provided some uh, antenna poles, so we only had to uh, mount some antennas there. And that's uh, under the roof. Um, so you can see a small APU here, a switch there some wires onto the roof, and there is the backbone uh, point of presence. But we can do 90 inch as well. So basically the same hardware to uh, so some 100 meters uh, more into the city, same setup, and there is another backbone uh, point of presence. Okay, what will be next? Currently we use uh, rec tables as an IPAM, an IP address management, so a management system for uh, tracking all devices and IP configuration and subnets we use within the whole network. It works, but it has no API. Some nice folks from Xing wrote an, uh, I think, Ruby-based API, which uses the database and provides some, uh, yeah, some API but I'm not into Ruby and to putting this together with SaltStack may be a bit hard. But there is hope. There is Netbox, a rather young tool, but with uh, active development. And uh, it currently has an API already, I think. Okay, there is nodding. Um, I'm not sure if it's writable yet. Yes, it is. Okay, thanks. Um, but the feature we would mostly use is a read-only API. 
And if we have that, we can kill all the pillar node information and put all this into Netbox and read the interface configuration and IP addresses and stuff from there and uh, use an example, an ex expansion module for pillar to put this together. So we can uh, kill uh, one point of configuration or one point of uh, redundancy in configuration. Like currently we have to uh, configure everything within rec tables for documentation and then copy all this information into pillar. We can avoid this step, that would be cool. Um, I'm currently working on a DNS Anycast setup, like the same IP address for a DNS server is present here, here, and here within the network. And your clients will connect to the nearest location of this. Uh, all of you use this feature when you connect to uh, YouTube or Netflix or Apple things or whatever in the internet. Um, we want to use a really or a rather, rather new feature for IBGP to uh, the ad path thing to put out multiple routes into the network and then achieve world domination, of course. So there is some Freifunk romance from one of the installation uh, evenings, a view over the city. And uh, yeah, that's the same position by day. So this is something we leave when we, uh, when we leave uh, a point of presence. Okay, if you're interested and want to learn more about networks, there are the routing days. It's an event we did one or two years ago, I'm not quite sure, um, from the Freifunk Rheinland. Um, it's in German, but I hope most uh, of the slides will be uh, readable if you're uh, not fluent in German, there are videos, there are slides, there are tutorials on how to build the internet. And uh, there are uh, another talk from me on more details about the SDN part available on SlideShare. And uh, I started blogging about all these things some months ago and will continue to do so until I finished all, uh, writing about all the parts. And that would be all. Thank you for listening. I hope you have some questions. Yeah, questions. Or was it too overwhelming? <laughs> and we have some network administrators in the room, so I guess you have some comments, maybe. Um, the Python code in the middle was Python 2, I think. Is there a reason why this is, it? This is Python 2? Or some tools are not available in Python 3 yet? Or what is the reason? Uh, to my understanding, SaltStack uh, relies on Python 2. So as these things are loaded from SaltStack, there is no much choice. More questions? If you happen to be too shy to ask here, Fetch me in the break, or it's a social tonight. Yeah, maybe a question from me. Uh, so what, what is the situation for other Fifong networks? Um, how, is, is your setup used by them, or how do you, does your setup compare to what they have on kind of tooling? Um, there are other approaches to automation. There are at least one or two Puppet repositories, as, of which I know, and I think two Ansible repositories. Some people in Darmstadt use SaltStack too, but uh, started with another approach. I know of two communities who ask me about how does this work, how does this work, so I'm under the impression that they want to uh, use the things we built, but I don't know of anyone already doing so. But it's all on GitHub, feel free. More questions? Hi, uh, great talk. Um, Thank you. What I what I still uh, failed to understand though was why exactly you uh, did the VXLAN over IP over Ethernet thing. Okay, um, 
I mean, you, you said you needed it for something, but I, uh, I didn't understand what it was. Ah, uh, yeah, let me search for the right slide. Please load. Like this one. Um, there is the, the Batman thingy, which is a mesh protocol. So um, it's a routing protocol for uh, ad hoc. Uh, the long name is Better Approach to Mobile Ad Hoc Networking. So the idea behind Freifunk is you ha can place some Freifunk nodes, which basically are some small routers, like uh, TP-Link models or whatever, uh, near each other, and they will connect and they will generate one big network. And this thing operates on layer two. So if I want to um, transport the Batman thing over my backbone, I have two options. I can provide uh, VLANs or, by, or other means of layer two connections between my routers. So I can use one VLAN for the Batman and one VLAN for IP, which is bad because I have to configure VLANs on switches and everywhere. Or I can build up an IP backbone and use VXLAN from between two routers to encapsulate the Ethernet thingy, which is more easy because I can generate all the configuration. You seem happy with the answer. <laughs> okay. Maybe more general Freifunk questions. So how many Freifunk users do we have in the room? A few. Also running nodes? Nice. Yeah, <laughs> more Freifunk nodes, please. <laughs> Any questions about how to set up a Freifunk node? I'm the backbone guy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't configure nodes usually. <laughs> okay, any more questions? If not, let's thank the speaker again for his nice talk.